What is going on, Uncancelled? How are you guys doing? Uh, as you can see, I am ecstatic over my New York Mets uh, winning both games against the Yankees. Come on now. We we now uh, yeah, have we a three-game lead in our division. You guys don't care. None of yeah, you guys watch do. baseball. Maybe anyway, do. but I have my, I'm saying that because I have my New York Mets apparel on. I got my Francisco Lindor jersey. You know how it is. But uh, thank you guys for <laughs> tuning in. I'm so happy you guys decided to watch uh, our Uncanceled podcast. We're going to be tackling a very important topic uh, today. We're going to be talking about uh, what to look for in a spiritual mentor. But we're not going to do that quite yet because first we have to rate, rate that. that. Apple. Apple. <laughs> Here we go. Let's do this thing. I'm glad that we did not plan that. I just went we for it. And they, they were right on with me. That was great. Um, <laughs> Brianna, why don't you tell us what type of apple we have today? Just today, is doing this. our apple is a honey crisp apple. I actually really like this apple. I'm not going to lie. I've already had it before. My apple does not look very good. Yeah, it feels. Interesting. It's like, like a little bit I've had tons of Honeycrisp apples. I will say before we try this, this is not the right season for a Honeycrisp apple. What is the, the right, right season? The right season is from uh, in the fall. So basically <gasps> any time in the fall, the fall is the right time for a Honeycrisp apple. Can we try different kinds of like... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Can we try different kinds of apple cider because like, you know, apples and... I think that that's <laughs> acceptable. There's Honeycrisp <laughs> style apple juice, by the way. And it is quite tasty. There's honey crisp um, little like gummies from Trader Joe's. There are. All right, Brian, that's okay. enough. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We are uh, promoting the honey crisp apple. Like, no, the honey crisp apple is good. She's right. It's very good. All right. Let's give it a try. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm nervous too. Wow. Honestly. Wow. Wow. This is probably really boring for people to listen to. Just like us crunching yeah. apples. No. <laughs> no, they know what's happening. They understand our taste buds right now are being... Wow. All right. Let's go right to the chase here. Um, I'm going to go first. Um... Yeah, this is a, this is better than a Cosmic Crisp. Whoa. This is better than a Cosmic Crisp from from last week. Um, no, we had Granny Smith. Oh, did we? Oh, Cosmic Crisp from a couple weeks ago. Uh, the Cosmic is uh, really good, but I think I just hadn't had a good Honey Crisp in a while. If you get a good Honey Crisp, uh, I'm gonna give the Honey Crisp a nine point five because it it's very it's su got such good flavor, such good crunch, but you can get a bad one every now and again, and that's one thing I don't love. And I gave it like a 9.9, .9, but Cosmic is, oh, a 10. Cosmic's going to be lowered now uh, based on this rating. Um, actually, you know what? Since it's the standard, we're going to make Honeycrisp a 10, and we're going to bring Cosmic Crisp to a 9.7. The only thing a Cosmic Crisp has better than a Honeycrisp is its consistency, but like consistency in the sense that every time I get one, I know what it's going to taste like. But the Honeycrisp, when you get a good one, there's nothing better. <laughs> it's just a tiny bit too tart, a little bit. Um, what? Yeah. It could be a little sweeter. I do agree. Mine is not tart at all. I'm gonna give it a nine point three. I don't know. I, I maybe I just got a bad one. It was a tiny bit grainy, honestly. But I'm like, just like really disappointed because mine is like delicious. But 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 I think this is the consistency I'm talking about. To be yeah, quite like with you. it's not bad. But I'm gonna tie it with a cosmic. It's a nine point seven. You can't. That's part of the apple. I it's feel a like 9. it's like 7. on its Both way out. Sevens. Like it's on its way out of its crispiness, so it's still there. But there's like a tiny bit of grainy. Maybe I'll give it a nine. It's still really good. Like I ate a lot of it. I am yeah, gonna I'll hold on to it. And I may take bites throughout the podcast. Anyway. Good apple. Good apple. Thank you, Ben. Uh, but now for the more important matters. 
uh, which would be actually talking about the Bible. Amen. Uh, I don't know. Apples are pretty important. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. It's Apple pie. The Bible. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we're happy to be back with you guys today. Uh, most of you guys know who we are. I'm Joey, and this is I'm my Brianna. wife, Brianna. Uh, we're the youth pastors here at Impact Youth. Uh, I think we have that behind us right now. Yeah, we do. But Come visit us. Even, yeah, come visit us. If you're in middle school and high school, come on out. Come visit us. Um, but all right, spiritual mentors. What to look for in a spiritual mentor. It is important that everyone in their life, regardless of if you're a Christian in ministry or you're a Christian just in general, has a spiritual mentor. Right. We're going to go through six different things you should look for in a spiritual mentor. Uh, and um, it's really important that your spiritual mentor checks off all of these right here because some people out there have some weird spiritual mentors they do. and they should not have them as their spiritual mentor. And then they're weird. And then they're weird <laughs> just like their mentors were. Uh, and we don't want that. We don't want weird we don't spiritual want you to mentors. Be weird. Uh, I'll give you an example of, of me and Brianna. We have a number of spiritual mentors. <clears throat> um, some from afar in a sense that we don't necessarily like know them a ton. Uh, but like you should have a spiritual mentor that you that like is like you know and you know very well. But it's okay to even you know we we listen to uh, Ted, Teddy and Carolyn Shuttlesworth a lot, and they've become like spiritual mentors to us. Although we we actually had the opportunity to meet them and we've been getting to know them a little bit. We don't know them well whatsoever, uh, but we got to meet them and they're just great people as yes. well in person. But we we don't know them super well, so they are spiritual mentors uh, to us in the sense that we've learned so much from them and just listening to their teachings and stuff. Yeah. But two spiritual mentors that we actually like know very well and that mentored us a lot. At Bible College were uh, Pastor Dave and Donahan Shoemaker in um, Northern Massachusetts. They are spiritual mentors in the faith to Bri Brianna and I. We yes. know them very well. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go through the six things that you should look for in a spiritual mentor. Brianna, why don't you go ahead and read that first one? Number one, someone who is older than you. This one should really be a no-brainer. You should not be mentored by someone that is, like, younger than you. Or, like, like it, it, that doesn't really make sense. It should be someone that's ahead in the faith in you. Right. You know, it's one thing, you know, I think it's one thing if, you know, you're 25 years old and, so, and the person that you look up to is, like, 23 or 24 and they're just very mature in their faith and stuff like that. That can be a person that, that you you know, glean from and that you receive from and you get mentorship from in some capacity. But you should ultimately, someone, you should find somebody that's older than you and that has more life experience to, uh, than you. Here's the reason why. Uh, Titus 2, verse 4 through 5, it says this. Okay. These older women must train the younger women. Stop right there. The older women should train the younger women. Obviously, it's just talking about women here in this scenario, but it's a principle that is true throughout Scripture. The older teach the younger. Why? The more seasoned in faith. Now, if you have a mentor that you're thinking of right now, you're like, well, he's not really that much older than me. She's not really that much older than me. We're about the same age or something like that. You can still learn from them, but you should be looking for someone that you can glean from that's older than you, uh, than you and ahead of you in the faith. Um these right. older women were training the younger women. And that's what, Ti that's what Paul instructed Titus. Let the older women tra the, tra train up the younger women. Um, and then, you know, if you, you're wondering, well, I don't know about that, you know, because it says women. I don't know about me. I'm a guy, you know. Well, Paul, the apostle, was a mentor to Titus and to Timothy who were young ministers. And Paul was an older apostle. Right. Older, Paul was older than Timothy. Paul was older than Titus. We're going to get into this story in just a second. But Elijah, in the Old Testament, was older than his uh, than the one that he was mentoring, which was Elisha. So Elisha was younger. Elijah was older. Elisha sat under Elijah. I know that's going to be a mouthful. Just think about it like this: J comes before S. J comes Elijah. The J comes first. The S comes next. So Elijah was first. Elisha was second. If you don't know who Elijah and Elisha are, I would recommend that you read your Bible. Um, 
and find out more about them. Uh, if you've been saved for a significant amount of time, I'd really recommend that you get in the Word and, and learn about that. Uh, yes. But if you just are newly saved or newly getting into the Word, then these are people that you can know, Elijah and Elisha. But, yeah. Brown, you want to say anything about that? S someone older than you. Someone older than you. Well, number one, we should do it because Scripture shows us. It's an example. And I think when it's someone who's older than you, you there's a respect. You have a respect for yes. them. And... You know, you have to take a realization. You have to realize that they're more mature and that what they say has so much value because they've gone ahead of you and done things that you haven't done or experienced things you haven't. And they can speak to things that maybe you don't know about yet. I, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Find an, find an older mentor. Find an older mentor. Because um, then you have those weird, like, you have a 21-year-old, you know. And this is just this is just just so you know. Your mentor should not be of the opposite gender. Like, you got these weird, like, you know, 20-year-old guys are like, oh, you know, yeah, you know, so-and-so over there. She's just, you know, she's just so, pr I mean, wise. She's just so wise, and I just want to <laughs> learn so much. No, you don't. You want you want to do something very different with her. That is not that is not learning about spiritual disciplines and stuff. And I'm saying, you know, I know it's kind of funny and stuff, but it's true. Seriously, you should right. not have someone of the same gender as you that, it, or of the, of a different gender than you mentoring you. You should not have someone of same. a different gender uh, mentoring you. You should have someone of the same gender uh, mentoring you. Let's go back to what the scripture says. It says the older women taught the younger women. Paul women Timothy. to women. Paul and Timothy, mm -hmm. by the way, contrary to popular belief, Paul was a man, Timothy was a, was a <laughs> man, just to be clear, that those people that they weren't gender fluid or, or not you know, understanding what their gender was, they were both men and Elijah was a man, and Elisha was a man. Nobody actually thinks that Paul was a female, but I'm just saying in general with popular you know, <laughs> trends in our society. Anyway. Amen. I think we made our point clear. Next. Next. Someone who follows Christ. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1, Paul, by the way, I say this all the time when I, met, uh, when I reference him, but maybe it's your first time listening to us. Paul is uh, an apostle. Of the church uh, of uh, the Church of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and he was, uh, was responsible for writing basically most of the New Testament that we have today in the Bible by the Holy Spirit's utterance and the, our Holy Spirit's uh, guiding, I should say. But Paul he said to the Corinthian church, "Follow me as I follow Christ." That's First Corinthians eleven one. Follow me as I follow Christ. Paul did not say follow me. That's it. Jesus said, follow me, because he is the Christ. He is the son of, a son of God. He could say that. But it's follow me as I follow Christ. If, if someone that you look up to and that you uh, look up to for mentorship, whether it's from afar or whether it's somebody that you personally know that is mentoring you, and they are not fully following the Bible, they are not fully following Christ. Right. And that should not be your mentor. You should, in fact, you should stay away from that person as a mentor. If they can't obey the word of God in simple areas, how could you trust them to give you spiritual advice? Absolutely. And I think that a lot of times, especially when you're in high school and stuff, it's popular to look up to certain, you know, singer-songwriters, um, people who are, you know, TikTok famous, whatever, whatever, whoever the person is what that comes to your mind, maybe an athlete. Yep. Like, it's popular to look up to someone like that, but at the end of the day, you can't follow their life. You can't follow what, because as you start following what they're doing, you'll start becoming like them, yes. which is of the world. So you want to make sure that you follow people who are actually, like, actually following Jesus, not someone who right. just says, like, yeah, I go to church. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Like they actually are following Christ. And and stay away from those inspirational people that are that are trying to just give you worldly inspirations right. and you feel so inspired. Stay away from that that type of person being your mentor because they're giving you things of the world. And really and truly, anything that has truth that's an inspirational quote is ultimately can be found in the Bible. Right. And it's just better to stay away from that because then you get latched onto them and you start living like them. And you, you don't want that. And, you know, no. I know people that have spiritual mentors that can't that can't obey the, the word of God on the most simple things. Like very, very simple things. They don't know how to they don't know how to love people, but they're your spiritual mentor. Right. Like, you know, they, they don't go to church, but they're your spiritual mentor. 
You know, like that that's very fundamental things. Like like if you can't do a simple thing and come to church on a, on the weekend and that's the person you're looking up to as a spiritual mentor, that's that is so fundamental and basic that you that anybody that is not any listen to me. Anyone that's not in church on a consistent basis should not be your spiritual mentor. Right. Very simple. Because it's very it's it, because how are they getting filled? How are they? Right, how are they going to pour into you if they have nothing? And, and like with their butt in service, like like their physical butt sitting in service, <laughs> like not not on not their couch with the, with the church live or whatever, and like you know a snack in their hand or something like that, you know, like <laughs> coffee. <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking of something funny that I saw online the other day with a somebody said something funny, but you know they they got a you know they they got a bag of Cheetos in their hand or something like that. Uh, but, you know, you, you don't want that. You need someone that's in church because when you're actually sitting in church, God can touch you and move you be, in, right. a, in a different way. Be, you could be sitting under the anointing. You cannot have your have hands placed on you, hands laid on you, and believe for healing or plan, uh, hands laid on you and impartation come into you. That You cannot physically lay hands on somebody and pray for them if they are not present in church. It is important that your spiritual mentor regularly goes to church regularly, goes to church. They have a home church that they attend to. They're not a church hopper that's going right. all over the place. You know, I go to this church one week and I go to that church the next week. No, someone that finds a home church gets plugged in and is there every single week. That should be your spiritual mentor because I'm sick and tired of uh, of uh, people sitting under spiritual mentors that don't even follow the word of God, that they themselves don't even know what's going on. And I know I'm being strong about this, but I need to be because I, I don't want any young people watching this. And I, there's probably not many older people, but, you know, young people watching this. I will not sit under anyone that is not fully following the word of God. I will not do it. If someone is not willing to follow the word of God in a very simple area, I will not sit under them. Obviously, people have their faults. People have their things that, you know, maybe they're not, th that they're working on or something like that. I'm not saying that you're looking for a perfect mentor. I'm saying you're looking for someone that is is seeking to follow Christ with everything that they have and can do the very simple things that the Word of God asks them to do. Absolutely. And when, if you say you're thinking of someone right now that you're like, oh, I looked up to them, but they're doing some of the things you're saying you know, cut that off. Find somebody new. You don't have to be rude to them, but find somebody new that is going to lead you in the right direction. Because what's going to happen is when you follow someone like this that can't follow these simple things, you're going to find yourself in a place that you don't want to be in. When you're, right. when you're following somebody who's making choices like that, you're going to find yourself making those choices and be the person who stays at home, who doesn't come to church. And you're going to find yourself like, what happened to my relationship with God? What happened? And it, it's all, a lot of it comes back to who are you following? Right. Who are you following? Yes, you're following Jesus, but who on this earth is your example like uh, of of really following Christ? Right. You, you have to have an example. You have to some, have someone you're following. And remember, you're not following the person. You're following right. the person's example of Christ. That's right. In uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 4 through 5. The Apostle Paul rebukes and corrects the Corinthians and tells them, stop saying you follow me. Stop saying you follow this guy or that guy. We are servants of Jesus Christ. Right. So while you're following, uh, while you're being mentored by them, you're following Christ. You know, you're following Christ. You will go where your mentor is taking you. Yeah. You will go where your mentor is taking you. If you do not like the area where your mentor is going, then don't go, then don't follow them. Don't follow them. I'm not saying to be mean to them or disown them or anything like that. You still right. talk to them, but don't allow them to have such a big place in your life. Absolutely. Next point. Number three, someone who is full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Acts 10, uh, verse 38. We, we, Brianna can probably I'll quote this verse without reading it. But, but I'll read it anyway. <laughs> I get nervous. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So Jesus is the standard 
of what a, of a godly mentor. He right. is the standard. He is the one that we're ultimately trying to imitate and do everything that he does. And Jesus was full of faith. He was full of power. It says Jesus went around doing good, healing all who were sick and pressed to the devil. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith. Right. And so in the same way, our mentor needs to be full of faith. Our mentor needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with power. Right. So when we want to we want to be like that. And then Acts 11, 24, I like the scripture. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith, and many people were brought to the Lord. And if you think about this, somebody who's going to be your mentor and who's full of faith in the Holy Spirit is going to be that example, and they're going to lead people to Christ. They're going to be bringing people into the kingdom. That's something that we want to be like, too. We want to be somebody who is is not afraid to to be full of the Holy Spirit and tell people about Christ. Someone who's bringing people into the kingdom as a, a as a result of yeah. of their faith and of the Holy Spirit inside of them. Like that's something that it's not easy to come by. There's not a lot of people who are not ministers and that are Christians that are are very like focused on telling people about Jesus and that are full of that full of that faith and power but there are people out there you can find them and they can be your example yeah absolutely full of faith and full of the holy spirit so we have someone older than you i threw this in there on that one someone the uh same gender as you uh and never mind someone who follows christ <laughs> someone who follows christ someone who has their butt in a seat during church that isn't eating a snack while they are, you know, sitting on their couch at church on Sunday, wiping the Cheeto dust off there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Someone who's full of faith in the Holy Spirit. And and uh, next, someone who you want to be like. Mm. Someone who you want to be like. Second Kings, verse 2, or chapter 2, verse 9. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9. It says, basically, the uh, Elisha, remember, S comes uh, after J. Elisha, the younger one, said to Elijah, the older one. Elijah never died, actually. Elijah, chariots from heaven came down and took Elijah to heaven. And so Elijah is about to go and ascend into heaven on these chariots, and Elisha, says this to uh, to him. Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I can do for you before I'm taken away. And Elijah replied, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. A double share of your spirit and become your successor. Elisha wanted to be like Elijah. You need to find someone that you actually want to be like. Do I want to be like this person? You might say, you know, I like, you know, I'm not saying, you know, if you don't like one aspect of the person or something like that, you should look for the closest compatibility that you can. But I'm not saying, you know, oh, I don't really like the way they do their hair. Like, I'm not saying stuff like that. But looking for someone that you ultimately can say, I want to be like them. I want to act the way that they act. I want to talk the way that they talk. Why? Because they're imitating Christ. They're imitating Christ. Amen. I think that pretty much covers that, that covers one. It. But the next one, the last two kind of go together. Brianna, go ahead and read both of them. Someone who sets you up for success and someone who trains you to operate in faith. Someone who sets you up for success and someone who trains you to operate in faith. Before Elijah was taken up into heaven, the verse before uh, chapter uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9, and 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 8, look at what Elijah does. Go ahead. Elijah said, Elijah, remember the mentor, not the mentee. Elijah, older, to the younger Elisha. (laughs) Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. He said, tell me, oh, oh, no, 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 2 Kings uh, Kings chapter 2, verse 8. Let me see the word. I'll see the sword. Praise God. The sword. Hallelujah. There it is. Then Elijah folded his, his cloak together and struck the water with it. The river divided, and the two of them went across on dry ground. Second Kings chapter two, uh, two, verse eight. There was a miracle. 
there was a miracle. It says that Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water with it. And struck the water with it. And what happened? The river divided the two and they crossed it. So on dry ground. Understand, there was a river. It was the Jordan River. It still exists today, from my understanding. He smacked it with a cloth and it went and separated and they walked on dry ground. Praise God. What a miracle. But then watch this. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 14. After Elijah ascends into heaven... And Elisha says, can I have a double portion of your spirit and be your successor? Look at what Elisha does. He struck the water with Elijah's cloak and cried out, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Then the river divided and Elisha went across. Watch this. Get this right here. Elijah's ceiling was Elisha's floor. Mm. Elijah ended or Elisha started where Elijah ended. The last thing Elijah did is the first thing that Elisha did with his ministry. Understand this. You will stand on the shoulders of the mentors that you have in your life. You will, you should, usually you have one person that's like really like your main mentor. You will stand on that, on the shoulders of mentors and you will go, uh, you will go beyond where they go. And so if you want to be ahead of the game, Find a mentor that's actually gone some places and actually done some things because right. then you can stand on their shoulders and go further than where they have gone. So Elijah set Elisha up for success. Elijah, Elijah showed Elijah how to operate in faith. The only reason Elisha knew to do that, to cross the Jordan River, is because Elijah showed him. Right. He wouldn't have known otherwise. We have to find people. That will train us up in the faith. Here's how you operate in faith. Somebody that will say, when you get sick in your body, will say, well, here's how you believe God for healing in your body. And then when they leave, you can go ahead and you can pass that down to somebody else. You watch their example and they go and they believe God for their finances. And they see it happen in their life. Then when they're gone and they've moved on and they've moved on or they have died and gone to heaven, you can then say, I remember the faith that this individual had, and now I'm gonna operate in that same faith as well. Right. And even Jesus is this example for us. John 14, 12, it says, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works. Even greater. Because I'm going to be with the Father. So if you, even if you're like, oh, this Elijah, Elijah thing, this is kind of interesting. Even Jesus, Jesus left it up to us. He was like, hey, I'm giving you something great. I'm giving you power. I'm giving you my spirit. I'm giving you authority. Go and do greater things than even what I gave as an example. Right. You know, you can go do one of two things. You can have a great mentor that you stand on the shoulders with and you're just like them and they're a powerful man or woman of God and you are now a powerful woman, uh, a man or woman of God. Right. Or you can go back to Cheeto dust guy <laughs> in the sitting on the couch and you can be just like Cheeto uh, dust guy or girl. You know, it doesn't have to just be a guy. It could be a girl. You know, and you could be a lukewarm Christian that doesn't go to church, that doesn't know the word of God and knows nothing yeah. about it right. and is just lazy in their faith. And that's because th- that's what that's what will happen if you allow those people to be a mentor. Now, if you've had a mentor like that before, it's not like there's no hope. You can find another mentor now that can help bring you up and stuff like that. But if you allow people like that to stick around, you never get away from them. Uh, um, th- th- that's, that's, that's where you're going to start. You're going to start with Cheeto Puffs. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that for those of you who Cheeto did that Puffs before. are good, by the way. Don't worry. Yeah, don't, okay. You know, I'm not like, eh. Actually, Cheetos are better than Cheeto Puffs. Just, just saying. But like, like people, you know, why, how come all the fat people are always eating Cheeto oh Puffs? Gosh. Why not Cheetos? They're better. Like, anyway, sorry, that does, that doesn't that's irrelevant to our conversation. So relevant. Right now. But <laughs> find yourself a mentor that look at it like this. This is a good analogy, and it doesn't involve Cheetos. <laughs> but how many of you guys have? Brian Scalabrini as your mentor in basketball. I know what you're thinking right now. If you've never, if you have never watched basketball before, you have no idea who Brian Scalabrini is. I don't if you've know watched who that basketball, is. you know who he is, and you know he's he was not a very good basketball player in the NBA. He was probably a very good basketball player because he made it to the NBA, but just not very good when he once he was in the NBA. 
There is not people out there that want to be great basketball players, that want to be amazing. They're like, you know who my mentor is that I want to be just like? I want to be like Brian Scalabrini. No, you do not. If you're a Yankee fan right now, and you know who Joey Gallo is, nobody sits there and goes, I want to be a great MLB baseball player someday. And my mentor is Joey Gallo. No, that's not, the, that, that's not who you're going to say. You're going to say, Steph Curry is my, men, is my mentor. He's the one who I look up to. Kobe Bryant. And now everyone that even doesn't even know basketball knows who they are. Why? Because they're really great. You know, I'm gonna, you're going to say Derek Jeter is your mentor. Like, you're not going to pick people that aren't great at what they do to look up to. You're not going to look to those people and anything else. So why do that spiritually? That's right. You shouldn't. Don't set yourself up for failure. Right. That's what you'd be doing if you picked Brian, whatever Scalabrini. his name is. Terrible last name. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, but <laughs> my goodness, bro, I, I'm sorry, Brian, if you're ever watching sorry, this. Sorry, Brian. You're a great basketball <laughs> player because you made it to the NBA. Unfortunately, people clown you a lot, and I apologize Jesus for that. Jesus loves you. Jesus anyway, does love you, though. Praise but God, you made a lot of money doing your, it. Don't basketball. set yourself up for failure. You wouldn't do that in normal life with anything. You wouldn't buy a house that's already broken. You wouldn't right. buy groceries that are already rotten. Right. You wouldn't set yourself up like that. Don't set yourself up for failure as a Christian. Set yourself up for success with the person who has real fruit in their life right. and is actually obeying the word of God. Right. I'll give you a good one. Imagine if you wanted to be a singer, songwriter, and musician, and you were like, Pastor Joey is my inspiration. <laughs> he is like, the one. I, he's mean? the one that I look up to. Why? What? What? I I don't sing. I I'm not a musician. And if I tried to be, I'd be very. I I would not be very good. Like I mean, I probably. You know, I I should say I shouldn't totally say that because I believe that uh, me and Brianna have learned that God can literally teach you how to do anything. Amen. So if if God really the wanted anointing. to teach me how to do it, He totally could by the anointing. But if I just started singing right now. I would not sound good, so I should not be your mentor. But <laughs> Brianna may be someone that could be your mentor. Now, from a songwriting perspective, Brianna really hasn't written any songs no. either, so you should probably find someone else for that. But from a singing and musical standpoint, Brianna would be a great person to look up to, but not me. Pick someone that will set you up for success, that, that, will, tr that will train you up to be successful, to operate in faith. Yeah. Don't settle for less spiritually. Amen. But I believe this helped you. Uh, if you tuned in and watched this, uh, I don't know what we're going to podcast about next week, to be quite honest with you. It will be great. It will, whatever it is, it will be good. But we're going to podcast next week about something else, hopefully. Uh, and uh, we're uh, believing God for big things for our youth group, Impact Amen. Youth. If you feel led to give to Impact Youth, please, uh, you can go ahead and do that. You can go to faithchurch.cc slash give. You can go ahead and sow a seed uh, to our, our ministry, Impact Youth. I don't know why I'm saying that. I just decided to say that today. But um, we're believing God for big things. We're believing God to see uh, miracle signs, wonder salvations, and, and uh, you know, even on top of that, to see people discipled and trained up in the kingdom of God. Amen. So uh, we love you guys very much. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we will see you guys at Impact on Wednesday night next week. God Bye bless. Bye, guys.